So welcome everyone. Thank you so much for coming out on, you know, a snowstorm in Maine, whatever. I'm Lisa Pullman. I'm the executive director of the Natural Resources Council of Maine. And today we are at the Augusta Civic Center to ensure that the Trump administration hears Mainers speak out about its proposal to allow oil drilling off our coast. Now, the U.S. Department of the Interior has set up a public meeting here today also, but they have failed to provide a microphone where citizens can provide comment. So, others have stepped in to do so. We expect many people to come and register their comments and thousands more to do so from their homes. Maine's full congressional delegation and state legislature oppose this plan, as do elected officials stretching all the way down from Maine to Florida. We fear that the Trump administration will ignore these concerns and forge ahead with this massive giveaway to the oil and gas industry. Maine has nothing to gain and everything to lose from this risky plan. I have a bunch of folks here to speak to, uh, on this issue today. Uh, first off is Kristen Porter. Um, hello, everybody. My name is Kristen Porter. I'm the president of the Maine Lobstermen's Association. The MLA is the oldest and largest fishing organization which advocates for sustainable lobster resource and the fishermen and the communities that it de depend on it. The Maine lobster industry contributes more than $1.5 billion to the Maine's coastal economy. It's hard to think of a single proposal that runs counter to everything that MLA stands for, but this BOEM proposal for offshore oil and gas development does just that. Allowing the exploration of oil and gas off the coast of Maine could, dev could devastate our fisheries, our fishermen, and our communities. Maine's fishing industries are dependent on Maine's pristine waters, and ev even a minor spill could irre irreparably damage the Gulf of Maine, harming both larval and lobster and adult lobster. The, the Gulf of Maine's delicate ecosystem supports a vast array of marine life that belongs to all of us and must be protected. Opening up, opening up any portion of the Gulf of Maine to exploring developing oil gas resources would certainly prove devastating to our precious resources. We know that offshore seismic testing exploration has shown to disrupt the migratory patterns of fish and marine mammals. It, it could pose a great risk to the northern right whale, which we are hard, working hard to save. It's clear to the MLA that the potential for harm posed by oil and gas exploration and development off Maine's shores far, as, uh, far outweighs its potential benefits. Our concern over offshore drilling is not new. My predecessor, Ossie Beale, one of my predecessors, because he was president in 1970, testified in con congressional hearings against oil exploration off the coast of Maine. And his words that he said that day remain true, and I'm going to read his quote. The association and the fishermen are 100 percent against oil on the coast. We've seen and we've read what it has done. This is our livelihood. We know there'll be oil spills because human nature is that we make mistakes one way or another. Um, it's, I could hardly doubt that Aussie Beale, nearly 50 years ago, could have imagined the Deepwater Horizon spill. But he was right. And it can and it will happen. So MLA stands before you today to say that we will, we're not going to allow this to happen on our watch. So we fought against it nearly 50 years ago, and we stand united with Maine's fishing community to stand against it today. Thank you. Next up will be Ben Martins, who's with the Maine Coast Fishermen's Association. Thank you. Uh, my name is Ben Martins, and I'm the executive director of the Maine Coast Fishermen's Association. Now, the Maine Coast Fishermen's Association is an industry-based organization started by fishermen who wanted to fight to rebuild the Gulf of Maine and ensure that we had a vibrant fishing resource for future generations. We as an organization work every day to ensure that Maine's coastal communities have diverse fishing businesses, which bring healthy, sustainable seafood back to our shore to feed the nation. And while I can stand here and talk about the importance of our fisheries to Maine's coastal economy, I'll let everyone else talk about money. 
dollar values are important, but to me and the fishermen I work for, this decision is about culture, a way of life, and putting food on the table. It is about prioritizing cheap energy over food and short-term gains over the long-term health and productivity of the Gulf of Maine. It doesn't matter if offshore drilling, offshore wind, mining, or any other type of future use can be put on the ocean. We must take the time to remember that fish is food and that we need to fight to protect sustainable sources of high quality protein for the health of our bodies, our communities, and the ecosystem. With every study that comes out, we learn more about the importance of including seafood in a healthy diet. Maine provides that seafood. We should be striving to create more opportunities to grow this portion of our economy and recognize that fishermen are an important part of our food system. We wouldn't, shouldn't stand for anything that puts our food at risk, and offshore drilling will do just that. I'm thrilled that Maine's congressional delegation has come out in opposition to this proposal, and I look forward to working with all of you in our entire state to ensure that Maine continues to be a leader in putting healthy food and seafood on our dinner plate. We should not allow offshore drilling in coastal Maine, in the Gulf of Maine, or anywhere along the Atlantic seaboard, and we truly hope this uh, proposal will not move forward. Thank you. Then Bill Mook, who is the owner of Mook Sea Farm, which is an oyster farm on the Damariscotta River. My name is Bill Mook. Uh, I own, I've owned an oyster farm on the uh, coast of Maine for 33 years. And if there's one thing I've learned over that long experience is that a healthy environment is absolutely key to the future of Maine's marine economy. For any public official, to uh, promote policies for uh, offshore drilling and oil exploration is really, um, it flies in the face, it, it completely ignores the risks that we've just heard about to, to the marine economy, but, but also importantly, it completely ignores the overwhelming weight of scientific evidence that carbon pollution is uh, upon us and is going to create profound changes in our marine environment. And so I would submit that any public official who supports offshore drilling, uh, it's really an act of malfeasance. And that's all I have to say. We start to have statements from our congressional delegation. I'm Chris Rector, and I'm here on behalf of U.S. Senator Angus King. And before I begin, I just want to say that I had the privilege of staffing Senator King at the Fisherman's Forum last week. We were there on Friday. And the words that I'm about to speak, I think, are a reflection of what was the unanimous feeling of all those that we spoke with when we were at the Fisherman's Forum as well. At this afternoon's meeting, the Department of the Interior will be seeking input from Maine people on the possibility of drilling off the coast of Maine. If today's comments are anything like the responses my office has received, I expect the sentiment to be overwhelmingly opposed. In my view, that opposition is entirely justified. Maine's oceans are a major economic engine for the state, especially in our coastal communities. From tourism to the lobster industry, the waters off Maine's coast contribute billions and billions of dollars to the state's economy. But those opportunities rely on healthy oceans, and a single mistake could cause irreparable damage to one of our state's greatest resources. We won't see tourists flocking to oil slick beaches or lobstermen fishing for petroleum-covered lobsters. So why would we risk that outcome? In my view, this is a straightforward decision. Any potential benefit that offshore drilling could bring is far outweighed by the risk of a catastrophe that could permanently compromise the livelihoods of so many Maine people. That's why I've joined with the rest of the Maine congressional delegation to strongly oppose any offshore drilling and it's why meetings like this are so very important. This is an opportunity for the people of our state to make sure that the administration knows just how important our coasts are to Maine life. I hope the Interior Department takes note, rejects any proposed drilling off the coast of Maine, and protects one of Maine's most important resources for the future generations of Maine people. Thank you. We have a statement from Congresswoman Shelley Pingree. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Sean Mahoney. I'm with the Conservation Law Foundation, and we are uh, opposed to this uh, proposal as we, have, as we were 20 years ago and as we were 50 years ago. But I'm here today to read a statement on behalf of Congresswoman Pingree, who is in D.C. today, and her staff um, was unable to join us. And she, uh, Congresswoman Pingree, states as follows. I want you to know 
that I'm fighting back against this proposal in Congress. I have co-sponsored legislation with my colleagues in New England to prohibit drilling off our coasts. It has been co-sponsored by all our senators and representatives from New England coastal states. And just yesterday, I joined fellow members of the House Appropriations Subcommittee on Interior and the Environment in sending a letter to Interior Secretary Zinke to voice our opposition. He will be coming to our subcommittee for hearing soon and will get an earful, earful from us then, too. It's hard to believe a proposal like this is even on the table, but that's the reality of this administration. When it comes to the environment, all it seems to care about is exploitation. With no thoughts to our future, the administration's actions have been a boon to fossil fuel companies and a bane to renewable energy efforts that are our best path forward and a resource that is a considerable source of employment and opportunity for Maine citizens. So it's critical that you're here today. Please keep up your advocacy, and I will do the same in Washington. Thank you. And we have, uh, oh, we also just want to shout out that Michelle Michaud is here. She's a staff assistant for Senator Collins. So this is just kind of impromptu. First of all, I want to thank everybody for coming out here today because this is a very important issue that will have a devastating impact on Maine. I just want you to know, Senator Collins stands with you on this. Back in January when this proposal came out, she, along with Senator King, wrote a letter to Secretary Zinke on January 8th, I believe it was, in opposition to this proposal. So I just wanted to thank you for coming and I want you to know that your congressional delegation in Washington, D.C. stands with you. We have Becca Bolas, who's the executive director of the Maine Public Health Association. My fellow Mainers, I ask you to please join us in voicing your concern about the recent proposal to drill for oil and gas off our beautiful coastline. My name is Becca Bolas and I am the Executive Director of the Maine Public Health Association. MPHA represents nearly 650 public health professionals across the state of Maine and we are committed to improving the factors that control our health. As Maine's Public Health Association, our sole mission is to assure the health of Maine's people and places, and our goal is for all Mainers to have the opportunity to lead healthy lives regardless of their income or where they live. In public health, we practice the precautionary principle. Defined by the World Health Organization, it states that in the case of serious or irreversible threats to the health of humans or the ecosystem, Acknowledged scientific uncertainty should not be used as a reason to postpone preventive measure. Furthermore, the burden of proof of harmlessness should be on the proponents of the activity. The reasons for practicing this principle are to prevent unintended adverse consequences to human and environmental health. Offshore oil and gas drilling is an example of such an activity that demands our steadfastness to this principle, in large part because no drilling is free from risk or threat to human, environmental, and marine health. While one of the challenges of assessing the direct health impacts of oil and gas drilling is that adverse health effects from exposures to potential contaminants can take decades to develop, consistently research has found that even in the short term, there are risks to human health. Worker safety is one such concern, including exposure to various forms of radiation and extreme weather conditions, such as intense heat, cold, and direct sunlight. Damage to workers' health also occurs through ergonomic hazards, including intense noise and vibrations, which cause damage to the musculoskeletal system. Despite this research, the Department of the Interior recently halted a National Academy of Sciences study to review and update the Bureau's Offshore Oil, Gas, and Drilling Operations Inspection Program to enhance safety, which means allowing this proposal to move forward would certainly be putting the health of hardworking manors at risk. The burden of proof that drilling is harmless is on industry and any degree of scientific uncertainty about the direct health effects for humans should not be used as a green light for proceeding. Thankfully, our entire congressional delegation recognizes the risk this proposal poses and I want to thank them for recognizing the harmful effects of offshore oil drilling poses to Maine's health ec economy and environment. Today I ask you to help us in assuring the health of Maine's people and places, and please join us in vo voicing your concern about this dangerous proposal. Thank you. Two of our legislators, State Representative Martin Groman from Biddeford, State Representative Michael Devon from Newcastle. 
Hi, I'm Independent State Representative uh, Marty Groman of Biddeford. Um, we have uh, beautiful beaches in Biddeford. Uh, it's actually kind of local code that we're not supposed to mention that. <laughs> I suspect a lot, of, a lot of you didn't know that. Um, you didn't hear it from me. Um, there's parking. Um, <laughs> we agreed hiking at Timber, Timber Point, and there's an Audubon Preserve. It's beautiful bird watching. But look, I want to say I get it, OK? I drove up here in my truck. Storm's coming. I want to have a four-wheel drive. We use oil. It's got to come from somewhere. And as a matter of fact, I'm raising money right now for people in Biddeford to be able to fill their oil tanks. But I mean, this just feels like a Hail Mary pass to me. We don't even have a statewide energy plan. You know, let's get that done in a bipartisan manner before we even look at something like this. Thanks. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm State Representative Mick Devon, and um, I'm here to proudly present to you a joint resolution from the legislature that went through the, went through the House of Representatives and the Senate without anyone standing up and speaking against it. It went under the hammer. It's considered a unanimous support. I want, I want to recognize Ms. Melissa Gil, um, Gates. She approached me well over a month ago and asked um, me to, to, if I would um, sponsor this resolution. I proudly told her I would. Um, she helped me out with the language. This has been a bipartisan effort from day one. I got this language. I went to the Senate president, Senate, uh, Senator Thibodeau. I worked with his staff. We worked out language that everyone could agree on. I then went and got bipartisan support, Democrats, Republicans, and independents to, to sponsor this. We then brought it into the House. There wasn't anyone that stood up against it. It went into the Senate. The same thing happened. The, the main legislature is sending the strongest um, signal we can to President Trump and Secretary Zinke that the state of Maine is not interested in offshore drilling. And I'm not going to read, read to you the entire um, joint resolution. I'm going to read the title, and then I'm going to uh, point out just a couple of, of facts for you. It's a joint resolution memorializing the President of the United States and the United States Congress to exclude the state of Maine from offshore oil and gas drilling and exploration activities. I just want to throw out a few things here. Um, first of all, there are over 45,000 jobs that depend on our coast and well over $2.3 billion. As Mr. Christian Porter has already mentioned, there's a recent study that was done by Bates, I think it was Bates uh, College, that demonstrated that the lobster industry alone is worth $1.5 billion. Why would we ever mess with that? Um, there, 65% of the, the people that work on the coast work <coughs> in tourism and recreation. There's no one that comes to the state of Maine to the coastline to eat a chicken sandwich. <laughs> if we don't maintain our pristine coast, we might as well pack it up and become part of Massachusetts again, because we're not going to be able to survive. Thank you very much. Representative Robert Alley of Beals. I just want to say, I love a good Maine accent. Well, you probably found it. <laughs> uh, Start with, uh, I don't know how many knows, there's 143 coastal communities from uh, Kittery to Kalish. But that's what there is. And they count on being able to fish, the lobster fish, crabs, scallops, cohogs, mussels, shrimps, and all the ground fish. And right there, we have about 5,700 licenses for lobsters and crabs, and another six or 700 for scallop draggers and uh, divers. And each boat has from two to five people aboard it. And, you, and on top of that, then you have your lobster dealers, your bait dealers, your extended families of all of these people. And uh, Mick alluded to the 45 to 50,000 homes that count on this and uh, are uh, dependent upon the licenses for the seafood product. In addition to fishing, tourism is one of the Maine's biggest employers 
and much of that is centered on the coast, employing tens of thousands of Mainers. All of these jobs are dependent upon Maine's reputation for its clean environment, especially the purity of the ocean water, and all it could be lost within one oil spill. And you would see pictures of oil-soaked lobster traps showing up on the news. That wouldn't be good at all. And being a lobster fisherman, myself, one of the only ones, well, there's two of us at the State House, Wayne Perry and myself, and I'm sure he had a reason for not being here today, but I'm here, so I'm going to stand up for the lobster fishermen and stand up for no drilling. Please don't allow... <laughs> and, that, and that summed it up. <laughs> Thank you. Melissa Gates from the Northeast Regional, who's the Northeast Regional Manager of Surfrider Foundation. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Melissa Gates, Northeast Regional Manager for the Surfrider Foundation. Surfrider has been working to protect America's coast for 34 years. Our members and supporters here in Maine are beachgoers, surfers, kayakers, sandcastle builders. We are beach users, and our common point of interest is vision for healthy ocean and coastal ecosystems and a motivation to volunteer to protect our state's ocean waters, waves, and beaches. We rise up now in Maine and across the nation with a single unified message to relay to the Trump administration regarding this proposal to open up waters off from our pristine coast to offshore drilling and seismic exploration. We say loud and clear, no. Can you all join me in saying that? <laughs> no. Not here in Maine, not in here in New England, and not anywhere in America. The Trump administration's attempt to sell ocean lands held in the public trust to private oil and gas industry ignores our rights as citizens, and it is an affront to existing ocean industries that flavor our thriving coastal communities and our quality of life, generating more than $114 billion in GDP and 2.28 million jobs nationwide. In Maine, as Representative Devin pointed out, Ocean recreation and tourism is the single largest contributing sector to our ocean economy, constituting over 65% of the state's ocean economy employment and nearly 53% of the state's ocean GDP. People visit vacation land to enjoy the bounty of our beaches, and this fuels other economic sectors as well. Opening up oil and gas lease sales off the coast of Maine would not only pave the way toward devastating the marine environment, it would also erode our quality of life and destroy the single largest contributing sector of our ocean economy. This is an already thriving economy of which Mainers are proud, and yet Donald Trump would have us throw it away on a gamble for a limited dirty fuel future, fleeting at best in any possible benefit to Mainers, rather than staying the course we've already set for advancing renewable technology. The way ahead for Maine and the nation to protect clean water, clean air, and healthy beaches now and for future generations is clear. The future is in renewable energy and heightened ocean protection. People visit our coast because our ocean beaches and our coastal communities are wonderful, welcoming, clean, and safe. There's nothing wonderful, welcoming, clean, or safe about offshore drilling and gas exploration. The administration's draft proposed plan for offshore oil and gas leasing not only neglects to take our economy and coastal communities into consideration, it also fails to appropriately acknowledge the level of environmental risk. The ocean is already stressed in unprecedented and accelerating ways by sea level rise, climate change, ocean acidification, overfishing, pollution, and development. And as the resource that helps regulate our climate and provides us with upward of 70% of the oxygen we need to sustain life on the planet. The ocean needs our help and not more poor development schemes that line the pockets of big oil companies and yet miss the mark entirely in every other possible way for the rest of us. Opposition to this plan, as we're seeing here today, is widespread. It's bipartisan, cross-sectoral, and huge. Americans across every walk of life are rising up to tell the administration that new offshore oil and gas development is not the answer. 
And what's more is that here today, the government is not providing us with an opportunity to speak to this issue in a formal hearing, nor to hear the concerns of our neighbors or hear from scientists other than the Bureau of Ocean Energy Management scientists. This is why a large group of our co collaborating organizations and concerned citizens have risen up today to provide such an opportunity right here for you all to speak and hear one another and share in your concern for this proposal. We'll take your spoken comments at the end of this press conference and at the end of the hearing, transcribe them and submit them to the official public record. Yet it, it is additionally critical that Maine residents, everyone in here, all your neighbors, even strangers if you happen to approach them with this, um, to get your written comments into the Bureau of Ocean Energy Management before the deadline, which is 11.59 p.m. Eastern this week on March the 9th doesn't leave us much time, especially if we lose power in this snowstorm. But that's the reality we face. This is the calculus by which the Trump administration has said it will make a decision on the next step, which is a proposed plan. And it's anticipated for release in November or December of this year for a subsequent 90-day public comment period. This is why we must participate in this process set forth before us. We must vocalize our opposition to this plan and to the sham of a public process before us. And if that proposed plan released in December, maybe November, still includes waters off from the coast of Maine, even after we've risen up from every corner of our state and from every coastal community across America saying no, then we will have a standing because today you came here, you spoke out, you will submit your written comments if you have not already and if you need info on how to do that, there's a handout on that back table by the water. And also by going up today to the Bureau of Ocean Energy Management's public meeting because the staff who are there are wonderful people, very educated about um, great programs like renewable energy and they're there to talk about that as well as this draft proposed program and it's incumbent upon each of us to speak with these staff people and let them know what our concerns are because after this they will go back and synthesize conversations they had here today and that will help inform the decision making process. So our opportunity here today isn't just about protecting the waters of Maine, marine life, a favorite surf break, or even a given beach community. It's about demanding that our government utilize the best available science and data and listen to the massive outpouring of public opposition to this destructive oil and gas development to shift the tides of energy development instead away from fossil fuels and toward renewables. It's about holding our president and federal agencies accountable for the decisions they make about the future of our ocean. So thank you again for coming out today and for really being part of this public process. And now we're going to hear from this representative who joined us today, Bea Alley. Alley from thank you. Rep. So in closing for this section, I'd like to thank our speakers and end by restating that offshore oil drilling would put Maine's economy and way of life at risk from spills and seismic testing. Oil drilling means oil spilling. The Natural Resources Council of Maine believes this is a dangerous proposal, and as you've heard, Maine communities, fishermen, coastal residents, tourism businesses, and our full state's economy could be exposed to significant unnecessary risks from oil spills and seismic testing. Offshore drilling won't produce the benefits for Maine, but the risks to Maine's coastal economy could be massive and immediate. The Trump administration's plan to sell off our ocean waters to the oil industry poses a major, unacceptable risk to Maine's coast residents' economy and marine life. Now is the time for Maine people to speak up and oppose this short-sighted giveaway to the oil industry at the expense of our economy and way of life. So with that, I would invite any questions of those who have already spoken, but then we're going to move on to others in the audience who wanted to come up to the podium. I think Todd is keeping a list. So are there any immediate questions for those who have already spoken from the press? Okay. Hearing none, Todd, will you please come up and do the honors of... Kristen, yeah, I'm going to come up. Oh, going to come up. Oh, good. Kristen, yay. Okay. I'll scoot out first, and we probably can let the speakers sit down. Yeah, so the background people can disband. Thank you. Thank you for being proud. And speakers, mostly speakers. When you come up to the mic, please state your first and last name for the record, and then we're asking people to keep their comments to one, two minutes so that we can get through as many as possible. 
Um, and I'll just come up and call the people as we go. Thank you. I'm Mark Brown from Marshfield. It's just outside of Machias. And uh, I have a message for Secretary Zinke that the, the coastal Washington County relies on the ocean for its livelihood. And uh, we, are, we are opposed to the drilling because it's a major threat to our survival. And it's also a major threat to the fragile e ecosystem out in the Gulf of Maine, especially the, the, the deep water coral reefs that, that are out there that are very unique. So please, Senator Zinke, don't, don't authorize drilling off of the coast of Maine. Thank you. Hello, everybody. I'm Sue Stableford. I live in Brunswick, and I'm also the vice chair of the Brunswick Rivers and Coastal Waters Commission. We are charged to do quite a few things, but one of the main things that our responsibilities entail is to assure the clean future of Brunswick's coastline for future generations. We actually have 66 miles of coastline in Brunswick. We depend on it for all the economic benefits that have been repeatedly mentioned here. Fishing, shell fishing, aquaculture, etc. We also depend on it as a educational opportunity for students in our high school as well as at Bowdoin College. And we frankly depend upon it for fun. So I haven't heard too many people talking about just enjoying the water for fun this afternoon, so perhaps I will mention that. We have lots of people that kayak, that sail, that swim off our coast, and we want to continue to be able to do so. So my response to the proposal to drill oil off the coast, absolutely not. Thank you. So uh, my name is Jasmine Labardi. Um, and why is this proposal a thing? Why is the administration wanting to open 90% of the U.S. waters to drilling? Why aren't we moving away from oil? We need to invest in alternatives and renewables, not continuing our dependence on oil. The risks far outweigh the benefits. We need to think of our future generations. No new oil drilling. <laughs> Hello, my name is David Cousins. Uh, I'm from South Thomaston. I've been lobstering for 38 years after I got out of college. and I can't believe we're having this hearing here today on this subject because it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make economic sense, it doesn't make environmental sense, and it doesn't make political sense except for the fact that it's a political payback from the Republican Party for big oil donations. And that's purely what it is. Let's call a spade a spade. I resent the fact that we have the Gulf of Maine, which is the most pristine environment. It produced the most valuable fishery in the United States a year and a half ago, which was lobster. And it outpaced every other fishery in the United States. We have the most valuable fishery in the country in that blocked in area right there. And if we had an oil spill like the Standard Horizon, that's the footprint. Well, that would wipe out one year class of lobsters, absolutely, and probably two or three year classes of lobster. And so my thought is, why would you want to do that to a pristine environment? It just doesn't make sense. I'm not willing to bet my future and my kids, I have three sons who are all lobster and have their own boats. I'm not willing to bet their future, and I'm not willing to bet everyone else's commercial fishery in Maine's future for a political payback from an administration that are morons. And I mean, they're morons. I mean, let's call a spade a spade. You look at the news every day, it's unbelievable. If our past administration had done one-third of what this one had done, they would be going crazy. So I say probably the only way to fight this is through the ballot box. And you know which side is pushing this, so my feelings are vote the other side. Thank you. I'm Linda Houghton. I wasn't preparing to speak but I have to. We all know <laughs> the oil drilling is all about profits for big oil. Um, so let me just share my personal experience. Many, many years ago, I had a small part in cleaning up a crude oil spill. You can never clean that stuff up. If that were to spill on our coast, Maine would never be the same. We absolutely must be opposed to drilling off our coast. 
And the other thing, just a thought from many, many years ago when I was a Brownie troop leader in Girl Scouts, the one simple thing we are all taught is you always leave a place better than you found it. Hi, my name is Nina Duggan. I'm a college student here in Maine. I've spent the last four years studying seabirds, ecology, and environmental law. Drilling off the coast of Maine threatens at least 12 different species of seabirds. 95% of Arctic terns nest on four islands in Maine. 95% of roseate terns nest on two islands in Maine. All razorbill nesting sites in the U.S. are on six islands in Maine. These birds are already threatened from climate change effects and are significantly threatened by offshore drilling. This threatens birds, marine mammals, fish, people. We don't need fossil fuels, but we need our oceans. Thank you. I'm Representative Ziegler. I represent District 96 in the main house. I sit in front of Bob Alley and uh, Nick Devon, which is a nice place to sit, believe me. I also have another hat. I'm Captain Ziegler. I hold a unlimited master's license in the U.S. Merchant Marine, and I work 35 years for the National Science Foundation. I have been everywhere. I have been in the Antarctic, the Arctic. I have gone every mile up those east, west coast, central, South America, all over. I have seen off of Australia, what you normally see when you come in is just the lights because they're burning off oil. You don't want to see that off the coast of Maine. It does take away from the pristine quality of it. But the other, there's two issues here. One of the issues is the immediate pollution that would occur conceivably from an oil spill or and or maintaining the rigs. We don't want that to happen on this coast. As I said, we also don't want to see the off-gassing. And just quickly, I'm also in the uh, Environment and Natural Resource Committee, and geologically speaking, you can't frack in the state of Maine. It's just not capable at this point and as far as technology. New Brunswick, there is that. I wanted to address that with the woman who talked about fracking. I think we should be more concerned about offshore drilling. The other issue, and I think is very important, is our policy. We do not have a coherent energy policy. We are not moving away from fossil fuels. When fracking did occur, that moved us back into fossil fuel and our nation depending on that. You need to talk to your representatives. You need to ask the question, what do you support before you vote for them, both on a federal level and a state level. And this is a resolution, and yes, we did vote for this. We do not want to see our state as representatives, as representing you. We do not want to see our state become something like, I'm sorry, but I worked down in the Gulf. I was down there, and I swam in the Gulf, uh, and I had to push the oil globules away. I got a bacterial infection. And it's not pleasant. And you don't want that on Scarborough Beach. You don't want that in Jonesport. You don't want that anywhere. So it's up to you folks not just to speak here, but to become a political entity and make sure that you elect people who will stop this on a, on a federal and a state level. Thank you. Hello, I'm Rachel Goldberg, and I've lived my whole life in the beautiful state of Maine. I grew up as a child of the mountains in the western Maine before being formally introduced to the oceans three years ago when I moved to Mount Desert Island to attend College of the Atlantic to study climate justice and environmental policy and science. Although I have fallen in love with the power of the ocean, I cannot speak as beautifully as those who have shared sediments from their experiences with fishing and recreating on the ocean, which is reason enough to not allow offshore drilling. Instead, I draw on the experiences from the past three years of my studies. During my time in college, I have had the great fortune to attend two UN climate negotiations in which I was forced to acknowledge the urgency of the climate crisis head on. I like to think that most people aren't climate deniers, but in denial. Denial that we'll have to make sacrifices to our ways of life and that we can no longer allow quick profit for people in power to be the primary driver in how we make our decisions as a state, nation, and world. 
It is widely agreed that a global average of 1.5 degrees Celsius of warming above pre-industrial levels will devastate communities, increasing the number of climate-displaced individuals and the frequencies of unprecedented natu natural disasters. The list of adverse effects of climate change can go on and on, and we could talk about it all day, probably. But we have already allowed 1.1 degrees Celsius of warming as of now, and according to the most recent report from the International Panel on Climate Change, it is expected that we will reach 1.5 degrees of warming um, in the next 10 to 12 years. When projects such as this one are proposed, we are responsible as a state and the country with the largest historical responsibility for anthropogenic climate change to stare greed and destruction in the face and say, no, this simply won't do. I ask our governor, our president, and Secretary Zinke to look around them. This is not the time to be installing fossil fuel infrastructure. This is the time to be making the rapid transition away from extractive industry to renewable energy in order to ensure a livable world. Thank you. My name is Arthur Bell. I'm from Yarmouth. And I'm here not only representing myself, but also the Earth Stewardship Team from the First Parish Church in Yarmouth. It is our belief that we as a people have broken our covenant with God. God had asked us to take care of Mother Earth and we have not done that. So with that in mind, we believe that climate change is real, that our continued reliance on fossil fuels is adding to the uh, climate change. And we also believe that the evidence that we've seen shows that there's plenty of oil reserves already discovered that um, such that as we transition to a renewable energy economy, there's no need for us to be chasing these um, other oil reserves, such as uh, this oil drilling off the, the coasts of um, uh, the whole United States, and in particular, uh, the New England coast. So we categorically oppose this, this plan. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Kai Osgathorpe. I'm a junior at College of the Atlantic in Bar Harbor, Maine. Um, I was just upstairs at the official VOEM uh, comment session. And while I was there, I was ensured that my comments would be loosely synthesized and sent off to Secretary Zinke. Um, but I wanted him to know that I was here today. Um, and I wanted to share three experiences that I have um, that make me opposed to this proposal. So first, um, I went to school in Hong Kong. Uh, I was there as a high school student at a boarding school, and while I was there, I was um, a scuba diver as part of a team monitoring coral populations and the fish that depend on them. So we would go out every weekend and we would um, measure coral bleaching. Uh, and it was, an apparent, it was very apparent before we even processed any of our data that there was significant coral bleaching all throughout um, Hong Kong's coast. Um, and that this was affecting fish, and that this was caused by warming sea temperatures. And so first, I oppose this proposal because um, I think we just need to be opposing all fossil fuel infrastructure that is causing warmer sea temperatures. Second, last summer, um, I was a commercial fisherman for salmon in Alaska, in southeast Alaska. And I wasn't even born when Exxon Valdez happened, but I now have many friends who were there for it and whose livelihoods were deeply affected. Um, by this oil spill. And uh, yeah, I want to make sure that doesn't happen here. And my third experience is that now I'm a student in Maine. Um, I've whale watched off the coast of Maine. I live in Bar Harbor. I get to see the ocean every single day. Its pristinity is incredible. It gives me solace um, when I feel hopeless. And um, I just want Secretary Zinke, I want um, the president and all of our leaders to know that I am very opposed to um, drilling offshore. Thank you. Hi. My name is David Bilski, and I uh, live in the Midcoast, Maine community of Bristol. I want to register my opposition to oil drilling along the Maine coast. On any given day of the year from where I live, I can look out and see some mix of harbor seals, harbor porpoises, varieties of gulls, ducks, and shorebirds, as well as cormorants, terns, loons, gannets, etc. Even the puffin, a threatened species once nearly extinct in Maine, is being reintroduced uh, there. Less easily seen, but just as integral to this natural richness are the crabs and lobsters, numerous saltwater fish and varieties of shellfish such as clams, oysters, and mussels. Just down the street, 
uh, are the Pemaquid Beach and the Pemaquid Point Lighthouse, major draws for visitors to our region of the coast. From all across the U.S., thousands of tourists and vacationers come here annually to enjoy this abundance of natural beauty, and Maine depends heavenly, heavenly on this uh, tourist economy. Thousands of jobs from Kittery to Eastport support this tourist industry. Equally so, thousands of Mainers are employed in the coastal fishing industry, harvesting a wide variety of healthy seafood for U.S. consumers as well as for global export. The economy of my village is dependent on fishing, primarily lobstering, but also scalloping and other limited fisheries. Needless to say, all of this would be at great risk in the event of an oil-related accident. We all know what an oil spill looks like. Images of death and destruction from the disasters in the Gulf of Mexico in 2010 and Prince William Sound in 1989 are forever seared in our memory. But it doesn't take an accident of this magnitude to keep tourists and vacationers away or to kill off the wildlife that plays a major role in our life and livelihoods. Just a minor oil sheen near the beach or rental cottage would be enough for a vacationer to choose to travel elsewhere, not to mention the destruction of a major commercial fishery. No one in their right mind would be willing to risk this. Maine doesn't need offshore drilling. Maine doesn't want offshore oil drilling. Please remove Maine's coastal waters from the National Offshore uh, uh, Continental Leasing Program. Thanks very much. Hi, um, my name is Collis Stoll. I'm an educator and I'm also a native of New Orleans. I'll get back to that in a little bit. Uh, I started a nonprofit called One Fish Foundation. It's, its mission is to bring the sustainable seafood message into classrooms from um, elementary school all the way up into college and also into communities via sustainable seafood dinners. It's a chance for people to interact with where their seafood comes from and start to learn um, everything that goes into seafood harvest, distribution, preparation, and why they should care. So when I'm talking to students, I talk about different harvest methods, different aquaculture methods, different ecological impacts of those. And we talk about environmental stuff too. We talk about climate change. We talk about the war warming oceans. We talk about the Gulf of Maine. We talk about ocean acidification. We talk about policy, we talk about a lot of things. One of the biggest challenges that I have, particularly when I'm talking to middle school students and high school students, is talking about the environmental things that are happening with climate change. Because when I start talking about the fact that the Gulf of Maine is warming faster than 99% of the oceans on the planet, their eyes get really big and they start to get concerned. Then I start talking about how uh, migratory patterns of different species are changing. So we're getting black sea bass up here that weren't here for a while. We're having more and more green crabs because they're getting a lot more adapted to um, the winters and therefore they're getting cozy, they're reproducing more, which is having an impact on eelgrass, which is the nursery for a lot of uh, uh, biota, a lot of marine life. Um, they also affect uh, clams and larval mussels but it's trying to keep that hope for them, you know, and trying to say that, well, there are things that we can do to try to adapt. We have to adapt. We're not going to fix climate change. That's one of the things that's just a reality. Also, you know, telling them that, well, climate change has a long memory. You know, what's going on now is 50 years from now. We're not going to change what happens in the next 50 years because of climate change. As somebody from New Orleans, born and raised there, when I saw this going on, it just about brought tears to my eyes, seeing this big black blob, brown blob, spreading out in the Gulf of Mexico, because I knew that the implications were going to be significant. So I guess my point is this. We got enough going on in the Gulf of Maine with ocean acidification, with the warming waters, with changing currents, which have huge impacts on where lobsters go, where northern shrimp go, we don't need this. We definitely don't need that. And the other thing I'll just say real quick, um, somebody said something about preaching to the choir. Yeah, we're preaching to the choir today, sure. But it's the choir that sings the loudest. And we have to keep spreading that message. We have to keep doing that because otherwise, 
This way, the way the administration, this administration works, something else is going on, don't pay any attention to what's going on over here. We gotta change that dynamic. Hi, um, I'm Olivia Jolly and I'm a freshman at COA. And ever since I've gotten to Maine, I've noticed the intense emphasis on fisheries and how deeply rooted the way of life of Maine is in such systems. I originally came from Southern California and I didn't see anything like that there. This is a whole new breed of um, investment in these um, economic systems. And in my marine biology class, we worked very closely with um, the, sorry, the people at Hadley Mud Flats and we looked into the provisions already in, um, the provisions already in place to protect such fisheries and they're already in danger even in the advent of the possibility of drilling off the coast. There's invasive species like Carcinus manus who are devastating the mud flats and eating the baby populations of clams. So there's no adult populations regenerating. And overfishing has also proven to be an issue that's destroying the breeding populations of these species so they can't produce anymore for the future of the fisheries. So why are we willing to risk something like the deep water horizon spill when they're already in danger and when this is something they can't recover from because there's already so much that's, that's been lost? And why are we not looking into other alternatives and protecting oil industries that have proven time and time again not to necessarily have the best interest of ourselves and the oceans in mind? The oceans, not to get philosophical, but they give us life, they give us oxygen, they provide us with food. It's amazing how people can completely look over the fact that most of our oxygen and most of our original ways of life were derived from the ocean. And it's kind of terrifying that I personally did not know that there was even a proposition to drill off the coast of most coastal states, or at, if not all of them, until um, I had heard about the initial hearing that was canceled. And I've spoken with friends back in California and in other coastal states. They still don't know. Why hasn't this been publicized and why aren't we being informed of the great risk that's posed at all of us, because it's not just us here in Maine and it's not just the fisheries. The ocean is the world and everyone will be affected. The facts are here and they're real, so why aren't we facing them instead of ignoring them and protecting things that should be changed? Thank you. Thank you. I, I agree with uh, virtually all of the sophisticated uh, presentations. And um, I'm Charles Spanger from Scarborough, uh, the 350 Maine, and the Scarborough Climate Action Team. And I simply want to say that uh, uh, this is, to me, the uh, among, among a few other things, is the represents the crisis of our democracy, and that uh, if we're going to sustain our way of life and our our uh, cultural and economic and spiritual destiny, uh, you know, our ability to have any control over our lives, uh, we have to stop the fossil fuel industry from ending our lives. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Um, I prepared a message for the um, Department of the Interior, Ryan Zinke, and government. Um, and uh, my name is Margaret Chul. I live in the Damerscott and Newcastle area an area of great beauty. The people have been working really hard up there, bringing back the alewives, spending a lot of money to bring in the alewives and have the fish ladder. Um, and I've lived in Maine my whole life, so I've seen a lot of changes over the years. And um, I did want to add that they, um, um, Andy Burt mentioned the Julie N, which was an oil tanker that hit the million dollar bridge in 1996. And I had a daughter that was working she was going to nursing school and she was working as an EMT and they called in the National Guard to come and repair the damages and clean up. And the people who were cleaning up that oil spill were so sick. What the EMTs and emergency people did was have to take, take their oxygen level all the time that they were working. So it's very dangerous. And just imagine the strain on emergency services 
if we had an oil spill, the way it stands right now, if there's a, a boat, just a sailboat or any boat that is sunken off our shore, they call in the emergency services, cordon off the little tiny spill, and that is a huge deal. We don't have a lot of resources in the state of Maine. Um, so the way I look at it is the whole Maine delegation, senators and representatives included, is opposed to the federal government's recent plan to allow drilling of oil and natural gas in, ga gas in Maine waters. Scientists, Bigelow, all the universities, they all oppose the use of seismic testing for promoting p petroleum businesses. Seismic testing harms the um, mammals, fish, waterfowl, birds, and all living creatures that support Maine fisheries. Maine stands with other coastal states that value the many traditional uses of ocean coastal waters, such as fishing, lobstering, recreation, tourism, and all of the related legacy uses since the days of the Native American peoples that require clean, safe, and safe waters in our ocean because we, the people of Maine, love and cherish our water, our oceans, and our fresh waters. And the people of Maine oppose any leasing programs proposed by President Trump for the purpose of drilling and blasting for toxic substances, oils, gases, and chemicals in the coastal waters off Maine. The extreme risk of oil spills is too high. For example, as people have mentioned, the 2010 Deepwater Horizon British Petroleum oil spill in the Gulf of Mexico. Perfect example of a huge disaster. And um, the people believe that this has to stop. Um, we live in a world that is interconnected. Any oil spill anywhere on the east coast of the United States could move up into our waters as well. The scientists have studied this so many times with float cards and other devices. They can launch them from Woods Hole or somewhere else. All those devices come into the Gulf of Maine, and as was described, they get inside the closed off waters of the Gulf of Maine and could get stuck there for years and years. It's not going to flush out if there's an oil spill. And from what I've seen, no amount of insurance money these big businesses could ever pay, could ever repay damages to the Gulf of Maine. They're not, it's not going to happen. This, I mean, what are they going to do? Put up like a trillion dollars of, you know, to protect us from damages? And even then, nobody would even want the money. We want beautiful, clean waters. So lastly, I would say, I stand here for my children and grandchildren who can't be here, for my parents who can't be here, my parents who witnessed the destruction of Europe during World War II, returned to Maine for peace and livelihood for the cherished environment of Maine, to be able to enjoy the beauty of Maine. Thank you. Um, and I vote no to offshore oil drilling. Thank you. I can't believe that we even have to be here talking about this subject um, when we already have our oceans under severe stress and our climate under severe stress. Why, are we, why is this even an issue? I mean, we know that oil is just contributing to global warming. It doesn't matter, you know, how many scientists you fire and how many things you take out of written documents. Um, it's there, it's the truth. Um, and also, I come from a background that lives off the water in Maine. Um, I have a, a very extended family from Stonington Deer Isle to Booth Bay to Hancock who were part of the lobster industry in one way or another. And, you know, to even go for oil when we know what it'll do and then let it, one accident happen and destroy everything that is coastal Maine is just, it's, I find it devastating and I find it keeping me up at night because it, it really bothers me that we even have to do this. You know, why do we have to deny what the truth is 
like the previous one just said, for profits. That's basically what it is. Um, that's all I have to say. <laughs>